So in this tutorial, we are going to continue from where we stopped implementing authentication in React using Spring Boot API. So we are going to go ahead to continue from where we stopped. If you look at the application, you see that we have the logout button right here, but we don't already have the logout functionality. We don't have that functionality currently. In the previous tutorial, we stored our username and password in an environment variable and we're able to retrieve this username and password and attach it to every request going out from React to Spring Boot. And we're able to use Interceptor, as you can see right here. But before we continue, I do think I just have to show you the workflow of how authentication and authorization works from React to Spring Boot. So let's go through this uh, diagram here. I've marked some to be in green. This is what we already implemented. And the ones in white, they are the ones we are going to implement after now. And if this has been informative for you, please consider subscribing to my channel because when you subscribe, it motivates me. It also kind of makes the YouTube algorithm uh, recommend my video a little bit more. So please click on that subscribe button below to subscribe to my channel. So this is basically the, the React Spring Boot authorization an authentication workflow is quite clear and easy. We actually have done many of these. The tutorials for getting up to this point, having this product list, fetching data from Spring Boot, and even having the, just want to show you, having this uh, filtering of select, pagination, um, search, and we also have done all of this in the previous tutorial. Please follow the tutorial if you want, pause this one, and also go through those ones if you want. Otherwise, you can just go ahead to continue with me. Let me explain to you how the Spring Boot React authentication workflow works and it's so clear and easy. Let's start from the first one. You have a registration form because the first thing you need to do is you want users to register. Without registration, there is no user, there is no login. So you want to create a user right so you have a registration form we are going to create it after now step one the user enters the registration data and it submits to spring boot we have the register endpoint we already have this the register endpoint accepts the user data username password first name and last name and just in case you forgot i'm just going to show you this form so this is the register endpoint. It accepts the user object as part of the request body, okay? Okay, so register, it registers the user and saves the data in the repository, in the database, in MySQL database. Step two, it returns the success code, which is actually the success code 200 or 201. 200, okay, or 201 created. If this registration successfully returns the success code, we now have to redirect the user to a success page that tells him you have successfully registered. Now we don't have the registration form, we don't have the success page yet. We are going to create it after now. Now let's go to step four. Once the user registers, you don't log him in, but you redirect him, you give him a link, you give him a link that takes him to the login page, he can now enter the username and password to be able to log in. In, the, in later tutorials, we are going to discuss or we are going to implement and explain how to implement user verification via email and later on via SMS. But for now, let's keep it simple. The user goes to the login form and that is at step four. At step five, the user enters his username and his password and he submits. Once he clicks on the login, after entering the username and password, it takes him to the login uh, URL or the login endpoint, which I think it should be uh, in security. Oh, we don't have it yet. Okay, that's my mistake. Okay, the login form, we don't have it, but the login, I think we already have. Let's just check in uh, user controller or maybe security controller. Okay, so we don't have the login endpoint yet. We don't have it yet. So sorry for that. We don't have the login endpoint. So the login takes the username and password and then it checks that username and password by checking the database whether this user exists. So this happens in the authenticate service or authenticate function. We can write it anywhere. 
it takes this username and password, it checks the database for this username and password, and if it finds this username and password, it returns authentication successful, which may just be a boolean that says authentication is successful. And of course, you can save the user data in the section, but for now, we are focusing on the React side of authentication. Okay, so when you go back to the React with a registration successful message, that is at step six. Step seven, React is going to take this username and password, these login credentials, and then save it in a local storage. It could also be session storage, it could also be a cookie. But for now, to keep it simple, it saves it in a storage. Let's assume this is local storage. Now, at step seven, the user now is redirected to the list of products, the product list page, which is the one we have which is actually a protected page. The product list page is going to try to make a request to retrieve products from slash products endpoint in, in Spring Boot API. So what's going to happen here is, is going to try to make a request. Previously, what we did is that we have an interceptor that intercepts outgoing requests from React to, to Spring Boot. It intercepts that React, uh, it in intercepts this request and adds a header to it, user login header, which is the alt header containing the username and password, it attaches it to that request. Because in basic authentication, you need to provide your login credentials. So for any outgoing request, we are going to intercept it and add the username and password to that request. And just to show you how it works, I'm going to go to React and you can see that the username and password in the previous tutorial, we had coded it into the environment variable and in the interceptor right here, this is the interceptor, we are reading the environment variable and we are adding this username to the outgoing request as the alt parameter or the alt key containing the username and the password as an object. So this is simply what the interceptor looks like. It simply retrieves the username and password. In this case, we had coded it into the environment variable, adds it to the, to the request, any outgoing request, right? Later on, we don't have to hard code it in, the, in an environment variable. We are simply going to store the credentials either in local storage. This is not really the best. It can also be in a cookie or in a session variable. Okay. so. That request contains the username and password, and then it sends it to retrieve the resource that is needed. The required resource in this case is product. And what happens is it retrieves the product and displays it on the page, provided this username and password is correct. This is step nine. In the step 10, the interceptor retrieves the credentials and attaches it to outgoing requests and the request is, su is successful and you are, we are able to see the list of products. Now let's now talk about step 11. Step 11 is when the user clicks on the logout link. So let's take a look at the UI. We have the logout link. When a user clicks on the logout link, what is going to happen is that the details or the login details that is available in the local storage will be removed for that user. And once that is removed, you redirect the user to the back to the login form, and that is step 12. So this is basically how React Spring Boot authentication workflow works, and it's quite clear and easy. So let's see where we stopped. So in the next part, we are now going to go ahead to implement the registration form, the registration success page, the login form. Then we are going to go to Spring Boot to create the slash login URL that simply checks for the validity of the username and password. And then we are going to implement the logout functionality so that when the user clicks on the logout link, it removes the credential from the local storage and then redirects the user to the login page. So this is where we are going to stop. Let's now continue in the next part. Let's dive in to actually implement this in Spring Boot, uh, sorry, in Spring Boot and React. Let's see in the next part. If this has been informative for you, please also, I remind you to subscribe to my channel. Also like this video and also leave me a comment if you have any challenge whatsoever or something you need me to clarify. So let's continue in the next part.